How can you spend one billion pounds and get worse? Not even the most optimistic Chelsea fan can tell me that they are confident in what is going on right now. Just so you know, Chelsea in the year 2023, where by the way almost 10 months in, have won six. Six league games, the vast majority against teams in the bottom half. The last time Chelsea won a game against the top six was back in 2021. That's a lie, by the way, I'm only kidding, that's not serious, but you believed it for a second. It was actually January 2022, so it might as well be in the new year, and it was Spurs, so it technically doesn't count. In today's video, I will go into the controversial collapse of Chelsea, and it is very much controversial in the way that they've gone out and done their business. However, when you do the business that they have done and spend the money that they have done, it usually always follows success, right? You spend a billion pounds on a squad, you get success. That's kind of how football worked unless if you're Man United. As it currently stands, Chelsea are 14th in the Premier League. And you may say, yeah, but you know, they've only played five games. It doesn't really matter that much. And you have a point. If they didn't also finish last year at a 12th, you know, 12th place, um, the point separating them and relegation was 10. In comparison, the gap between them and Champions League football, fourth place, <laughs> what? Well, was 25. What has happened at Chelsea? Because I thought that this would be a bit of a, you know, a transitional phase. However, eventually things will start working out and with a new season, a brand new reset, new manager, everything will then have a chance to make sense, get some of the deadwood out the door and to bring in a more complete team. And instead they got rid of the deadwood and then played football manager. You cannot tell me that trying to sell Conor Gallagher, okay, you were trying to sell him less than a month ago to then captain him less than a month later in the Premier League, none of that makes sense to me. And also the fact that Conor Gallagher is the captain at Chelsea, for me, kind of says it all because he's not a bad player, but Christ, man, he should not be a captain at Chelsea Football Club. The best example of what's going on at Chelsea is explained by this clip. After beating Luton 3 0 at home, Poch was questioned about two players that no one's seen or heard of in the last entire summer, and this was his response. I just want to ask about two players who have disappeared Marlan Saar, who was on loan last season. Who? Cool. Marlan Saar. Thanks, and what's happened to Jamie Cumming, who played the first game against Wrexham? The goalkeeper. Oh my goodness. Uh, my answer. And then, Shimi. Yeah, I don't know what we can tell you. I don't know because you surprised me. It's like uh, you punch and I am in like this. Who? Who? What, what do you mean who? You're paying this guy like 50 grand a week. What do you mean who? Malang Saar, who was bought a couple of years ago, played some games, got loaned to Monaco. No one's heard of him since. He's not in any squads and he's still at the club. He's not gone on loan anywhere. Is he even registered to the, to the squad? Can he play? I don't know what's going on here. And that for me is mental and showcases the amount of players just coming in and out that you can't even keep up anymore. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments about Chelsea. Kind of how do you see the situation? And I'm going to go through kind of how I see it and the current state of the club right now because Christ almighty, they are playing a risky game here. So tell me your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new and thank you for the love and support on my socials. Of course, my daughter was born um, a couple of days ago on Wednesday. So thank you very much for that. And um, she's all healthy. My wife, she's healthy. Everything went to plan. So I appreciate your love and support. And yeah, subscribe, try to hit 3K likes. And Mazzola Designs, my own design company. Let's do code Chelsea for 15% off for the next four eight hours um it's been going well thank you very much and link top of the description for the best football prints on the platform so thank you very much let's go in basic terms chelsea's start to the 23 24 season has been nothing short of a disaster five matches into the new year pochettino has only got one win against luton at home I mean, if he didn't beat them, then Christ almighty, I don't know what would happen at that stage. They have five points and sit 14th on the table. And let's get the obvious out of the way here. Yes, 
Chelsea have got a very expensive squad. Now, of course, there is some method to the madness here, as a lot of their transfers, people think about how much they spent. However, they have had a lot sold in the last window or so, which I do think is important to highlight, as it's not just all money. Like, yes, they have spent in this one window around 400 plus million. However, they have sold quite a lot of players. I mean, just to list them off here. Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Kovacic, Koulibaly, Pulisic, Mendy, Lopfus Chik, Ampadu, Lukaku, Hudson-Odoi, and then some free transfers that lifted up a lot of wages in the likes of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Angolo Kante, Azpilicueta, Hakim Ziyech. I mean, the list can, can really go on. So altogether, even though they spent around 400-ish mil, they have sold around 230, 40 mil as well. It does sound like a lot, but in terms of net spend it's not really anything too obscene compared to the rest of the league however we do need to keep the elephant in the room here the fact that yes they have spent a lot of money last season too and this has been said a thousand times and really net spend can't really defend them much here because the only players they sort of really any worth was Werner, Emerson, Jorginho and Gilmore but for not too much cash in the grand scheme of things and he spent around you know as we all know touching over half a billion uh, not just in the winter window which is insane compared to what he's usually spent but also spent a healthy penny in the summer too in the likes of Raheem Sterling, Kukurela and Wesley Fofana and Koulibaly who they've already let go. The story at Chelsea is trying to rebuild the rebuild because the other rebuild wasn't good and they rebuild that rebuild again and they are rebuild FC. Keep in mind only two years ago they had that big window that it was huge on social media that they had signed a ton of big players, talented young players to help Tuchel at the time that you know was gonna go on and win the Champions League and they did you know they signed Timo Werner, they signed Ziyech, they signed Kai Havertz that was a big deal at the time. Also, Edward Mendy and Ben Chilwell. I mean, five signings, but five big signings. And we cannot forget the likes of Thiago Silva on a free transfer. That was a fantastic window. Spending around just over 200 mil, and then came the 21-22 year, and that was nothing short of an absolute calamity. They only spent money on two players, and one of them was about 100 million quid. You know his name. Lukaku, and that was it. And the other one, I guarantee you can't even tell me who the other guy is unless you're a Chelsea fan. Do you know who the other guy is they spent money on? No? Okay. Saul. Yeah, he didn't play. I know. In this season, they also let go for a lot of young talent that was seen to be the next generation of Chelsea. You know, the, the likes of um, Gay that went to Crystal Palace, and Tomori, Tammy Abraham. A lot of players have come in and out of Chelsea. So that is the most important thing to get on all our minds here. Chelsea are the opposite of stable. They're instable. I know. Good English, I know. But if you are not stable, then you are not consistent. Therefore, you don't have a consistent lineup and you are not Manchester City that can rotate and it all makes sense because how they do things is a lot more slower. At Chelsea, it's kind of all over the place and they got a ton of players to please and they don't really know how to really do it. The way that I read Chelsea is that they're trying to sign a ton of trendy players that are in the know and in the hype and signing them on long-term deals and kind of hoping they work out first and then figuring out what to do with them afterwards and for me that is how I genuinely see the situation now it may not be the fact that may be, that may not be the case they may have an actual plan tactically on how this would work on a squad and how it would all come together in the future however it is Chelsea's fault for making it look like they have no idea what they're doing. The fact that Hakim Ziyech was on his way out, I believe, to PSG, and then it fell through. Then he played and started for Chelsea the next game. Things like this that tells me they don't know what's going on here. How can a player be basically on a plane to go to a new club that collapses and then he starts the next game for that club that he was about to leave. When I saw ZX starting that lineup against Fulham, I just I just laughed. I didn't know what to say. And same thing can go for Conor Gallagher that happened only this month too, that he was on the verge of maybe going to a new club. Tottenham Hotspur was in the running to get him on final deadline day and they were priced out. I think they wanted 45 mil. And then after almost leaving Chelsea, a couple of weeks later, now captaining them against Bournemouth away. This for me just indicates the lack of stability at a football club where you look at their lineups and for me it makes no goddamn sense a ton of their fans on social media and twitter fans by the way do not represent the entirety of a fan base trust me i understand that however they go into all these wingers that they're signing and all these ballers that are so cold and so 
fucking cool, bro. And basically means that they want to have sex with them. However, none of them barely even plays or scores any goals whatsoever. Madureke went from PSV to Chelsea. The lad barely even plays. Cole Palmer, God knows why he joined Chelsea as they already have five, six wingers and he's barely going to play either. As Raheem Sterling, who people keep on forgetting exists, or they did forget exists until the start of the season, they forget that he's there too. Mudrick, I mean, Christ almighty, I don't even know how to even explain this guy because he's clearly got talent. And this is a thing that I need to get out there. These players have talent. Palmer. Baller, Mudrick, he was one of the most excited players in the world. However, to join a club at the top level, at elite level, you need stability, you need leaders, you need people that can be the, the foundation, the core of that squad. A stable centre back pairing, a stable centre mid pairing, and instead, they're basically doing a football manager save and trying to sign every single player possible and just throw them into a team and hope that they just get along and they can work out eventually. Caicedo, is he worth 100 million? No! No, no he's not, he's a decent footballer, but he's no more than, than 60, 50, like, he's not worth that much, and the fact that he, he went for that much money is uh, astonishing, when you compare it to the likes of Jude Bellingham, now that's an actual 100 million pound player, and Chelsea, they've signed three players for over 100 million in the last three years, in Lukaku, Enzo Fernandez, and Caicedo, now to give some credit to Chelsea, they have been very unfortunate in terms of their injuries. They have had a lot of injuries this year. I mean, when you look at the bench that played against Bournemouth, I, that, that, that blows your mind. I don't even think many Chelsea fans even know who these guys are. Never mind us. Cole Palmer, Chero, Martin. Okay, that's fine. They got Petrovic and Bergstrom and Gilchrist and Matos and Stutter and... David Washington, the injury list in Chukwema, Shalabar, Fofana, Lavia, Nkunku, Badiashile, Broha, and Rhys James. I mean, Rhys James, I don't think he has gone longer than five games in a row since 2020. And I feel really bad for him because he's a fantastic footballer as well. They have had injuries. They have been very unfortunate. However, simply put, the team that starts the games are more than good enough to go and beat Bournemouth or Forest at home. I mean, you would think so, but clearly not, as... In the Premier League especially, teams are getting much more stronger each year as money is no longer as big as an asset as every single club has money now. Burnley have spent over 100 million in the window. Burnley! Of course, I've not even mentioned the name Todd Bowley here, and a lot of you already know, I've kind of ignored it because I've already gone through it. Amortization is a word that's been said a thousand times, but you look at the contracts of these players, and it is astonishing. Almost every single player on their team has a contract that goes on until 2028. The vast majority of their new signings has a contract that goes on until 2030. When you go to a Romeo Lavia, a Caicedo, a Mudrik, a Madureke saying, hey bro, We've got eight years of you in a contract. You say that to a young player, are they going to say no? Of course they're not. And then comes the mentality shift. I remember watching interviews and documentaries about Manchester United back in the day, or Arsenal, and how they treat the younger players coming through. You don't give them the, the jewels at the start, because then what do they have to strive for? A mentality shift instantly happens that once they get the big money they see it as they made it and they stop working as hard now is this accurate for every single player no but i would like to say the vast majority you have a 19 year old a eight year seven year deal guaranteeing them at least 50 million if they go through their entire contract they're set for life they've already completed football without even having to do anything you see my point here, you see why I think this is a problem, and this is what happens when you give young kids a massive platform, you give them all the money in the world before they even do anything. That for me is a massive problem. And then you throw those kids into an environment which is forever unstable, with no leaders and trying to work it out for themselves. One or two may swim, but a lot will drown and you'll lose a lot more money in the outrun. One or two of them, maybe even three, may become absolute ballers and stand out in the next year or two. But I can guarantee half of those players that were signed in the last 18 months, half of them will be gone within the next two years. And I have reason to believe that because they've already done that enough times. Due to their amortization and how they've been adding players, players onto their books, if they don't get Champions League football, they don't start being a lot more successful very soon, then kicking that can down the road, it will end up reaching a wall soon, and that wall may arrive a lot sooner than you would think, as a lot of these young players on large contracts, it may be harder to get them off the books on high wages 
if they are not performing well and due to their long contracts, they will have no reason to actually leave. Todd Bowley, I believe, means well and, he, and he's clearly a smart man and maybe he's been very unfortunate in terms of the fact that it just hasn't worked out right now as of right now. The squad is still incredibly young. However, I see it as really, really unbalanced when it comes to a top elite level team. Money can buy you players, but it can't buy you a team. And that's what is happening at Chelsea right now. And they don't have any stable players there or leaders in that team whatsoever. You look at that team and you see Thiago Silva, and that is it. Maybe Enzo Fernandez, you can maybe say, is could be a leader, but he's not really shown that so far for me. Chelsea are banking on time. That's what I see, and they hope that with time of young players, they will all gel together and form into a proper outfit. And maybe this is a transitional period. However, can you spend a billion in a year and a half? and still expect a transitional period? I don't think so, and I think it's a waste of money in the grand scheme of things. Granted, saying that, and I know as people say it, yes, they did win a Champions League. So maybe it's a Chelsea way to always just be completely chaotic at all times. And that is a very Chelsea thing. Tell me your thoughts down below on Chelsea. The way that I see them right now, I, I kind of i am a bit happy when I see them lose. That sounds really bad. But I think that the way they're doing things, if this is successful in football, then I think it will lead to even more chaos down the line because money is already at such a dumb level and it's only going to get more and more insane. And I, I kind of, I think that building a team that makes sense and you build it over time with an actual philosophy and some actual thought to have consequences for your actions. If you buy a bunch of players of, on big wages of big money and if they fail, then it's okay. Just buy another one in the next window and it'd be all fine. I don't think that is what football should be about. I think it should be about actually being a good manager, having a good recruitment strategy, making correct decisions at correct times and not just bailing yourself out by buying another half million worth of players in the next window. Consequences should be consequences. And at Chelsea, if this doesn't work, then it should face them. Because if not, every single team will be doing this to an extraordinary effect. And then at that stage, I don't even know what football will even be in five years' time. And by the way, before someone says it, no, I don't have an agenda against Chelsea. Nothing personal. I've got a lot of mates that are Chelsea fans. However, I just find it to be a complete mess. So for the sake of your club, I hope that you somehow work it out. But... I don't know how much time you guys need. So yeah, tell me your thoughts. This has been a kind of a rambly sort of video. Have Chelsea been playing that bad? I don't think they've been as bad as the results do suggest. However, with another lack of a complete clinical striker, I just can't see it change anytime soon because they need to score goals and they, they don't have a clinical finisher. I did a tweet two weeks ago that I got given a lot of stick for, but I don't think there's a single player that they have that can score 10 goals a year um, in the Premier at least. I, don't, I mean, you got Jackson, who is a great player, of course, he's got ability, but I just don't think he's clinical. I just don't think he's a killer. And with pressure, I think that will play a factor too. So, yeah. Comment down below. Like, subscribe. See ya.